the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. Like that marshal ain't ever gonna quit. He's been dogging our trail for the last 80 miles. You reckon we ought to wait and see what he wants? Well, he's a federal man. You aiming to kill him? I never saw a tin star yet that would stop a rifle bullet. that everyone has a double, but this is almost frightening. What did you say his name was, Marshal? Mort Kenyon, down from Oregon. He's got a bad reputation as a fast gun and a killer. And you figure that we can keep that reputation alive, huh? If you'll go along with it, I can handle things here in Diablo. But Kenyon's partner got away. Suppose he shows up in Sonoma. That's a calculated risk, Annie, but one that's worth taking. I don't think you two realize that if our plan works, we'll crank the biggest counterfeiting operation in the Southwest. It'll be dangerous, though, won't it, Marshal? Yes, it'll be dangerous, Annie. The sheriff in Sonoma was killed. Apparently, he got too close to the counterfeiters. Well, is there any law in Sonoma now? Deputy Sheriff. Take me a while to grow a mustache. You'll do it? Annie? My part's easy. The tag's been wanting to go to the fair at Sonoma. I think Tag should see that fair. Sonny? Watch closely. Now you see it. A la carimo, cinco negales. Gee, that was swell. How about one more, huh? All right, Sonny. Now I'd like someone in the audience to loan me a handkerchief or, or a neckerchief will do. Thank you. Now uh, keep your eye on this neckerchief. I will. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, don't worry, young man. A few uh, words of mystery will restore the handkerchief completely. What were those words again? You better remember them. Oh, yes, I remember them. 
cloth cloth start to mend come together for a friend Fifty cents will buy you a trick that will mystify your friends. How about the one you just did? All righty. Thousands of years of mystery brought down through the ages for a half a dollar. A half a dollar? That's not much. Well, all either of us can do now is to wait for Lofty Craig. We only had a clue. That sheriff that was killed. Will Stevens, did he ever talk to you about anything? No, he didn't talk very much about his cases, unless he was sure. I don't think he realized how close he was to something. Must have bumped into the answer quite suddenly. Mm. Did he have any family? Mm-hmm. A niece. Laura Stevens, my fiance. Mm. She'll sure be glad that something's finally being done. Well, she can't know now. We can't risk telling anyone else. Yeah, I understand. Oh, by the way, she manages the hotel here in town. Are you going to stay there? Yes. Well, I won't go over when is Deputy Craig arriving in town? He's coming in this afternoon. And that's when your plan starts, huh? Yes. All we can hope then is that it works. They're all handmade. It's quite a fair, Laura. And it's awfully nice of you and Jeff to show me around. Well, it's not often we have such a celebrity in Sonoma. I wish Dad were here. Hey, Annie! Annie! I learned a swell trick. It's a mystery of the Orient. It only cost me 50 cents. But I'll need somebody's neckerchief. Neckerchief? Well, what are you going to do with it? You'll see. Can I please, Annie? How about you as a mine, young man? Oh, hello, Dave. Hello, Jeff. Dave, I'd like to have you meet Annie Oakley and her brother, Tag Oakley. This is Dave Morgan. Hi. Hello. I recognize you from your pictures, Miss Oakley. It's an honor to have you with us. Well, thank you. Now, how about the trick of yours, young man? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Morgan, maybe you'd better not. Uh, will you please hold my hat? Watch closely. Oh, tag. Don't worry, Annie. It's all a part of the track. There we go. Tag. Don't worry, Annie. It's all a part of the track. Cloth, cloth. Start two men. Come together for a friend. Now hold out your hands. See? Oh, Tag, look what you've done. Gosh, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say, Mr. Morgan. I'll be very happy to pay for it. Oh, never mind, Miss Oakley. Maybe he just got his magic words wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, mister. Well, forget it, Tag. But if you want to make up for it, you might be able to do me a favor. Yes, sir. Get your sister to join our shooting contest. She'd be a big attraction. Oh, would you, Annie? Well, what do you think, Jeff? Oh, I think it's a great idea. Well, what can I say? Well, thank you. I'll go tell the boys. Right, Dave. Next up is Mike Tillman. Best till now, Charlie Jensen with two. Remember, Mike, get the bottle first, and then the tin can before it hits the ground. Three times. Oh, You're the last shooter, Miss Oakley. Come on, Annie. That's a perfect score. Now, who's going to try and best Miss Oakley in a quick draw and fire? Well, how about you, Mike? Not me, Dave. Being beat by a woman once is plenty. <laughs> well, come on now. There must be someone here that's willing to give it a try. There is, mister. Right here. Maybe you didn't hear the lady's name, mister. It's Annie Oakley. She's the fastest shot in the territory. Maybe I didn't tell you my name. It's Mort Kenyon. And up in Oregon, where I come from, women folks tend to their sewing. Like they are. Mort Kenyon. I remember seeing pictures of you. On post office walls. Jeff, you're not going to let him in the contest. What can I do, Laura? There's no law that says a contest is restricted. He's a killer. Dad would have run him out of town. 
Sorry, honey, but he's not wanted in this part of the country. I can't legally stop him. Glad you feel that way, deputy. I just might stick around this town for a while. You got no objections to that? Hey. Well, not if you stay clean. Set of two targets. The game is Oakley. It's a contest. I'm ready. Honey, aren't you gonna stay and watch? You watch. You're the one that welcomes Mr. Kenyon into our town. All right, you two. See the targets down there? And when I give the signal, you both draw and fire. Start on the outside glass, working towards a smaller one in the center. We know the rules. Just give the signal. All right, you start on the left, Kenyon. Miss Oakley, you on the right. You ready? Go! He beat Annie Oakley. Like I said, women should tend to their sewing. You made that look real good. Well, Lofty's a good shot, Tag. Oh, you can't fool me. I know you shot at Lofty's target, and he shot at yours. Well, let's keep it a secret, shall we? <laughs> Doggone it, I just don't get it. We'll stick with it, Tag. Which room's Kenny in, ma'am? Right there, 102. Yeah? I might kill him. I'd like to talk to you. A lot of people would. What's your business? Private. All right, what's in your mind? I was just going out. I got a proposition I'd interest you. All right, you want to listen? Make it fast. You're good with a gun, Kenyon. We can use a man like you. We? My boss and me. We saw you out shoot Annie Oakley. A guy with a talent like that can make himself a little dull. Doing what? Let's take a little trip. We got to deliver a package. There's 500 in it for you. A lot of money for delivering a package. What's in it? Well, you're interested, or aren't you? I might be. After I talk to your boss. I'm doing his talking. Ah. I don't do business with messenger boys. Now look, Kenyon. I wouldn't be alive long if I did business with every two-bed gunman that came along. Now you go tell your boss that. He won't like it. What he likes doesn't bother me. I do business with a man who pays the bills. Not his hired hand. Why, you... Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Can't you do your fighting outside? I'm gonna bite you now. Oh, I don't know, but they've just about wrecked the lobby. That Kenyon's a troublemaker. You've got to get rid of him, Jeff. All right, now run along, messenger boy. Tell your boss what I said. Jeff, do something. Arrest them. Honey, I'm sorry, but there's no law against fighting. Seems like there's no law against anything since he came to town. Mr. Kenyon will pay for the damages, won't you, Mr. Kenyon? Anything you say, little lady. A man like Kenyon's got no place in Sonoma. No telling what he'll do next. Sheriff Stevens would have run him out long before this. Kenyon hasn't broken any laws. What can I do? Looks like you don't want to do anything. Honey, please. It seems like I've been wrong about a lot of things. Laura. Jeff, let her go. There's nothing you can say now. Annie, I'm losing my girl. The way things are shaping up, it looks like my job is none too safe.
know it's hard on you being deputy. Maybe it'll all be over soon. Laura will understand when she finds out the truth. Well, I hope so, Annie. What about all this, Lofty? Breaking up the hotel wasn't part of your plan, was it? No. I think we got him on the hook, Annie. I was offered a job this afternoon. He's acting kind of a guard for a package they're going to deliver. Counterfeit money? That's what I'm hoping. You got any idea who's behind the counterfeit? Not yet. But I got a hunch I'll be hearing from him real soon. You're a hard man to contact, Kenyon. But I admire your caution. Save the soft talk, mister. Let's hear your deal. I'm delivering some money to Colton the day after tomorrow. I just want to be sure it gets there safely. What's the matter with Wells Fargo? This money of mine, well, uh, it's a little different than most. Why? You can make it yourself? As a matter of fact, yes. I haven't had much experience with counterfeit. I'm dealing with strangers in Colton. I'm willing to pay for a good gun. I've worked a long time on this ship. I want to be sure it gets there safely. And I get 500, right? In cash, in real money. In real money. When do we start? We'll meet here today after tomorrow. Four o'clock. It's a deal? I'm in. I still can't believe Morgan's behind all this. He's behind it all right. But good. I'm worried, Lofty. What if they find out about you? It'll all be over soon, Annie. But just you and Jeff remember to stick close by. I will be there. As soon as I'm sure that Morgan has the money, then we'll make our move. Lofty, be careful. We don't have anything to worry about until the day after tomorrow, Annie. I sure hope it works. You know, growing this mustache, uh, may have a good point after all. You never worried about Lofty Craig like this. Well, it's just your romantic reputation, Mr. Kenyon. Well, now, in that case, young lady, uh, why don't we step inside and talk this whole thing over? Good night, Mr. Craig. <laughs> Doggone. Mike Tillman. Good to see you. Been a long time. Brings you down this way. Oh, nothing special. Why, you got something on the fire? Been around a couple of days ago, you could have made yourself a bundle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, it's hired another guy. You might know him. Mort Kenyon. Mort Kenyon? <laughs> You're crazy. What do you mean? Kenyon is dead. I was with him when he got it. Oh, no, he couldn't be. I've seen pictures of Mort Kenyon. It's him, all right. I tell you, Kenyon was killed. It was a U.S. Marshal that done it. If he was Mort Kenyon, he'd know you, wouldn't he? Sure he would. We rode together for more than five months. Come on, Gil. Let's go see the boss. You may get that job after all. Kenyon in? Uh-huh. You all alone here, boy? Yes. Annie and Miss Stevens are over at the fair. You're early, mister. A day early. Plans have changed, Kenyon. Boss wants to see you right away. Anything wrong? No, just something you forgot about. Get your hat. Take long? Ah, uh, just a few minutes. Where are we going? Relax, just follow me. We'll go in the back way. What's up, Morgan? I had ideas about sleeping today. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Gil Porter. You 
give me all the way over here just to meet somebody. I thought you'd be glad to see him. Well, don't tell me you forgot me, Mort. I never had much of a memory. Seems we met. In Abilene, remember? Yeah, sure. Sure, now I remember. Nice to see you again. It ought to be real nice, being as how I've never been in Abilene and you're a dead man. <laughs> If I hadn't have seen Mort kill, I'd swear this guy was here. All right, mister. Who are you? You're asking the questions? I've got one. Who are you working with? I'll make him talk, boss. It's all yours. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> All right, you're wasting your time, boys. Not anymore. Hold it! We'll take him with us. Still riding to Colton? That's right. Only by way of Arrow Canyon, just in case he tipped our plans to anyone. All right, take him outside. They've got him. They're taking him to Arrow Canyon. They're in Mr. Morton's office. Just getting ready to leave. Eddie, what's this all about? Tag will explain, Laura. I've got to get Jeff. This is where you get off, mister. You heard what the man said? His mouth. All right, now start walking. Where's the package? In Morgan's saddlebags. 50,000 in counterfeit bills. Oh, everything is fine. Now all I gotta do is explain to Laura. I'll do that for you, Jeff. As soon as I shave this thing off. I don't know what to say. I didn't understand. I'm sorry, Jeff. It wasn't your fault, Laura. It was the only way we could get to the counterfeiters. And when the others in town find out about it, I'm sure they'll understand, too. Well, I wish you could stay on. The fair will run for three more days. No, we have to get on back. Before Tag loses any more money with tricks that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> All set, Annie. Why, Annie, he's actually handsome. If you like the type. Say, I never did get a chance to show you my trick, Lofty. I'm sure it'll work this time. Trick? What kind of a trick? Oh, it's really an amazing trick, Lofty. Uh, just let him tag your neckerchief. Your neckerchief? Well, go ahead. It's really worth it. All right. Take it easy, will you? I just bought that one. Don't worry. Hey! Don't worry, just watch. Cloth, cloth, start to mend. Come together for a friend. Hold out your hands, Lofty. What happened? Where'd it go? I just don't understand it. It's very simple, Tag. You're just too good a magician. <laughs> <laughs>